Hey everybody, Bobby from BrewHardware.com and I'm going to quickly go over some of the options and new products we have for electric powered brewing. Uh, the first is just a quick recap of our RIMS hardware solution. Uh, this has been available for some months now but I thought I'd bring it up because uh, I haven't made a video about it yet. Uh, we offer our inch and a half tri-clover RIMS tubes in 12 inch lengths as well as 18 inch lengths. They all have cam locks, uh, the male part of a cam lock disconnect system, sanitary welded directly into the triclover tube. And uh, this is not threaded on, there are no threads involved here, okay, so interior uh, is very smooth, there's no, th no places for bacteria to, to grow. Um, not that that's a big deal on the hot side, but uh, it's extremely clean, uh, there, everything is a polished surface. And um, the way that this works, for people who don't know what RIMS is, I'm just going to quickly let you know that uh, a heating element like this one gets installed into the end here. And your wort flows out of your mash tun through here, gets heated by the element, and then flows back out and sent back to the top of your mash. Um, these do require uh, PID controllers to regulate the uh, the elements power on and off uh, to reach your desired mash temperature or to maintain it rather uh, so if you're unfamiliar with control systems and uh, you're not really interested in getting to know them uh, disregard this type of uh, system but this is really is an intermediate to it I would say advanced brewing technique okay we've gone a step further than just a simple inch and a half tri-clover to one inch MPSL adapter like this one we've had it welded onto uh, an electrical enclosure so after you thread this in to this adapter you make your electrical connections and thread this together and now you have a protective enclosure and a grounding location. There's a grounding lug inside here that you would attach your ground to. So again, once you put your tri-clover gasket in place and slide the element in, inside, then you can put your clamp on here and clamp it down. All right, so it's a pretty elegant but simple solution to the problem of encapsulating those electrical connections and providing a grounding lug that will ground the entire assembly to your electrical systems but uh, obviously for safety purposes. We also have a cord grip here with a, a strain relief here and this particular connection uh, is appropriate for running uh, low wattage elements. We, uh, we also have um, a connector that is uh, based on three-quarter MPT, which will handle up to 0.7 inches of cord diameter, which would be something like uh, your 10.3 SJ cord for a 240 element, for example. All right, so that's a summary of our RIMS system. Again, it comes as a 12-inch or a, an 18-inch tube, depending on what kind of element you want to put in there. In addition to installing these electrical heating elements in a RIMS tube configuration like the one I just showed you. Another popular use is installing them directly into your brewing vessels like your hot liquor tank or boil kettle in an all-electric system. So the challenge for, in that application has always been installing them in a leak-free method as well as encapsulating the electrical components just like I was talking about with the RIMS tubes. There's a few different ways of going about this. Um, a lot of people will install these weld, uh, in a weldless fashion using a one inch lock nut and a gasket like this. So you would uh, make an inch and a quarter hole in your vessel and then install it like this. But now you have this electrical connection sticking on the outside and people have come up with different ways like using PVC couplings and end caps and things like that. They work but they're not really elegant I would say uh, there, there are makeshift ways that work on the extreme budget um, one thing we have available now is our miniature enclosure that has the perfect size hole 
over here so I'll show you how this would install again you would still only be making an inch and a quarter hole in your pot um, you take our new end cap now you install this into the vessel from the outside again no gaskets yet you wrap these threads in a liberal amount of Teflon tape All right. push your gasket over the threads on the interior of the pot and then using the lock nut with the o-ring gland or recess facing the o-ring you thread this on now if you've used enough Teflon tape you'll notice that there is some resistance to threading this on and a little bit of drag that's just ensuring that you're going to have a good seal. All right, and you tighten this all the way on. And then you tighten on the electrical enclosure, which will have your, your ground lug like this one. All right. And there will also be a strain relief and cord grip on here, like the other one. So basically, that's all that sticks out of your kettle, which is about two and a half inches out of, out away from the kettle all right now this is the most uh, economical way of having a really nice enclosure on a weldless element install all right you still will have to sort of disassemble your weldless system uh, if you want to do any real you know intense cleaning on here um, otherwise if you just leave it in place installed uh, it's pretty secure and it should be leak free just like any other weldless install of a heating element. Now I would say an upgrade from from this method of course you're talking about a little bit more money but another way of installing these is using a triclover setup similar to what we do on our rim system um, this is an inch and a half triclover long ferrule and if you are having fittings welded into your vessel this is definitely the way to go uh, you would weld it uh, you would drill a approximately inch and a half hole in your vessel um, insert this into there and have it TIG welded uh, of course you know people have trouble finding real capable welders to do this type of work for them but if you're sure you found one this is definitely the way to go right and what happens here is now that this is on the, sticking out of your vessel you have a location for your heating element and you would simply take your enclosure oh, with the gasket in place okay so this o-ring is the seal for the threaded connection into this adapter make your electrical connections of course thread on the back enclosure put your triclover gasket on and again you have this sticking out of your kettle you insert this into there and you put your clamp on just like every other application. So that's the welded version. Okay, the last thing I wanted to mention was because of the difficulty in getting good welding done, a lot of people are looking for weldless options. Uh, people have soldered these into their vessels by uh, doing what they call flanging or dimpling of the hole in which this will be inserted which means that there's sort of a the some of the material of the vessel has actually been dragged uh, into a cylindrical shape so that it provides more contact surface area between this ferrule and the vessel wall itself so that there's actually something for the solder to hold on to now that technique is relatively tricky in that you have to build yourself a tool that will do it um, if you want to go that route, go ahead. There's some uh, guides on various websites and homebrew talk about what size fittings can be assembled to make that part. But we have a better solution. This is a inch and a half triclover flange 
connected to a machined flange that has a radius that is pretty close to most pot diameters. Okay, the difference is is if you know if you have a, a rounded pot and you have a flat flange, there's really uh, only two close contact points and then it fades away and you have to sort of bridge the gap with the solder. This particular flange has a radius so that it follows more closely that radius of the vessel itself so there's way more contact area for solder. And you'll notice, I mean, there's there's so much surface area here that it will outperform any dimpling method that happens to be used. So And it's actually a nice uh, rough surface that will hold solder very well. All right, I'll probably do a follow-up video on how exactly to install this into your vessel, but you really be making a, an inch and a half hole to accommodate this interior hole, and then you'll clamp this to your pot and then silver solder it. Uh, with a silver soldering kit that we're probably going to be offering shortly. Same concept, this will be soldered into your vessel and this assembly will go on just like the weld on version would. Alright, so now you'd have a solder on uh, flange, you can take the element out of the vessel for cleaning purposes. Uh, another cool thing about having a triclover flange on your vessel is that if you want to flip-flop between an electrical system, say, in your own home, to being able to use these vessels on a propane burner for brewing at somebody else's house that doesn't have the uh, electrical capacity that you need, you can remove the element and pick up an inch and a half triclover uh, blank cap and connect this. And now you've blocked off that connection and you don't have to drag all your your cables around and you don't have to um, dirty your element while you're doing a propane brew. Um, these silicone gaskets are good for like five or six hundred degrees so as long as you have liquid in that vessel while it's being heated you don't have any concerns about the gaskets being overheated or melting. And one last thing I wanted to mention was uh, that we receive several questions about why someone wouldn't want to just uh, solder or weld a lock nut or a half coupling into the side of the vessel for installing the element instead of these options that I've just explained. And one thing that most people fail to recognize when they're doing this for the first time is that if you weld a lock nut or some fixed thread um, system like a coupling into the bottom of your vessel is that if you wanted to use one of these ripple elements that present a lot of um, surface area for a low density heating uh, if this is installed very low in your pot when you go to thread this in you're gonna notice that this ripple elements going to contact the bottom of your pot and you will not be able to thread this in um, that's one of the advantages of either using a weldless system with a lock nut or using the triclover solution is that when you put this element in you don't have to rotate it anymore so you can really mount this thing very low in the bottom of your pot so you can fire that element with a lot less liquid in the pot if you're going to use a welded in um, lock nut or coupling then you're going to have to install this high enough in the pot so that that ripple or curve in the element will clear the bottom of the pot and we're talking about at least an inch and a half higher than you would really want to install this element so that's the answer to that if you go ahead and weld a lock nut or a coupling in and want to use a ripple element you've got to go up higher um, using weldless or triclover in any configuration you get to install this really low down into the pot If you have any questions about the stuff I just showed you, please email me at bobby at brewhardware.com.